What's up, YouTube? How is everyone? I am hoping good. I am here with another video, and tonight my video is going to be on past traumas from in your childhood um, that pertain to physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Um, this is something that I just recently um, went through. I when I went when I started my awakening, my journey, and all the good stuff, you know, that comes along with it. You know, that is one thing that you have to face is, you know, your past traumas and stuff. And I am clairvoyant, so I was showing exactly what had happened to me and who had done it to me. And um, and I what it was is there was two family members in different homes because my parents were divorced um, that did this to me. And they also, one of them also would allow their friends to come over and also do you know have sex with me too um this started when i was a baby which is i don't obviously remember that but i was showing that and i trust the universe that you know everything they show me is what what you know is true i would never question that so and it was it was a common thing back in my you know my generation when i was a kid a lot of people were doing it it was during the uh, my th children of the god cult was really um, big back then and it was very active where I live and all over but I believe I believe this is just my personal belief that it had something to do with that um, because in that cult they they really um, pressured people to have sex with children because of I can't remember exactly why but um, it was it was something like you when you did that you were doing something God wanted you to, or so, I don't know, it was something really crazy, but it was a, that cult was known for that. I apologize. Um, and like I said, it was back in that generation. And I've had other people talk to me about the same exact experiences that I had. And, um, and some of them remembered from childhood and some, some of them didn't. They, some of them went to a therapist and to see why they had so many issues and stuff like that. So, well, sometimes it it can take a person many, many years to remember any type of trauma. When you're traumatized, it's, you know, obviously it's traumatic and, you know, people deal with it in different ways. I did research um, the subject and I came to the conclusion. Um, it is known as, um, the name of it is what they call it, is Recovered Memories of Childhood Trauma. What we need to think about before we say, oh, come on, there's no way people could forget that. There's no way. Well, you know what? We all forget dates. We, you know, anniversaries, birthdays. We forget, you know, something on our schedule unless we have it written down or in our, you know, on our phone or something. We forget phone numbers. We forget, you know, we forget a lot. So, I mean, that just shows that it is not an easy thing for, for somebody to forget, but it is something that can be re, re, uh, repressed. So then you just tuck it away because you just don't want to deal with it or whatever the reason is for each person. The answer is yes. Um, under certain cir circumstances, for more than 100 years, um, doctors, scientists, and other, other observers, here I go with I can't talk, have reported a connection between trauma and forgetting. But only in the past 10 years have scientists studied um the connection between childhood trauma and amnesia. So the memories from the baby stage to early childhood, which is, you know, between two and three, um, are unlikely to remember. Research shows that many adults that, who remembered being sexually abused as, ch as children experienced a period when they did not remember. So, I mean, it's really common. Um, scientists also have studied childhood uh, victims, children, vic you know, as children as victims at the abuse, you know, during abuse. And then they've also studied uh, child victims at the time of a documented uh, traumatic event, such as, you know, sexual abuse or whatever. Um, Often the victims forget these events as they become adults. They discover that some people 
do forget the traumatic experiences they've had in their childhood. Even though it was established, it, it's an established fact that the traumatic event occurred. So it is, you know, it's proven, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's not something that these people just made up or, or somebody like me. It's not just something that you make up. I mean, if you're in your right mind, don't get me wrong, because there are people that make up stuff to get um, attention or whatever their reasons are. But I I would have never, ever known. I would have never remembered. I would have never guessed that this happened to me. I was um, the baby of my family. I was treated poorly by both sides of my family. It was like I was the black sheep. I've always been the black sheep, even though I, I mean, I, of course I've done stuff that's wrong. I'm not perfect. But, you know, I was always a good kid. I got good grades, um, stayed out of trouble. I, you know, I was respectful to my parents and, you know, they didn't have to hail my, you know, ride my ass about my schoolwork or anything. I was, pre I was a pretty good kid. So I just, I was the black sheep of my family. I was the one that people used as a doormat and they have my entire life until I cut everybody out because I was just sick of it, dealing with it. So what makes people finally remember their trauma what what triggers them to remember um there's many different things that can do it it could be like you could be watching a movie and something in that movie can trigger you um you could be reading a story you could be um you could have a disturbing event happen in your life that automatically triggers it or you could even be say it's christmas time you go to sit down with your family at around the table and all of a sudden a memory pops in your head. You know, just being around the people that were around when it was happening or the people that actually did it to you. I mean, it's it could be a very triggering thing. And then, of course, like something like me, you know, I'm going through my awakening. You know, during this journey, you're you're having to face a lot of a lot about you, a lot that you don't want to see, a lot that you have repressed, a lot about you know, the hurts that you felt in life and the lot about what people have done to you or you've done to others. So that it, it's a very triggering time also. I, I went ahead and I went on to say, in my case, it was um, developing my gifts of uh, vision and being shown what was done to me by my family. Um, I was emotionally, physically, and sexually abused. And I remembered some some of it, but, um, it has gradually came back into, you know, through memories, um, and through visions. I mean, they've really shown me, you know, they didn't hold anything back, which, you know, I'm very grateful for because I, I think that we all need to face everything that's happened to us in our lives and try and work through it the best that we can to, to help us become better people, to help us learn from that experience and there's a reason why it happened and you know I I hate to say that when it comes to something like this but it's it you know it's part of my life and I can't sit and dwell on it I need to face it and heal from it and then move on and hopefully help people that go through the same experiences as I do and um and then you know obviously talk about it people are ashamed to talk about the experiences that they had, good or bad. And that's not what life's supposed to be about. Well, you should never be ashamed of anything, especially when we didn't, you know, do anything wrong. Especially when we're innocent children. Children are innocent. Nothing like this should ever happen to a child. But unfortunately, it does. And it's very, very common. And it happens to a lot more people than we're even aware of because people won't talk out, you know, talk about it. Have I personally pressed charges? Have I personally gone to the police no and my reasoning is probably will sound stupid to some people but to me um the people that did it are old um do they deserve to get in trouble well yeah they do but is it going to solve it now no it's not so um i'm dealing with it the way i want to deal with it and and that's just how i feel am i saying that you shouldn't report it no i absolutely not i think it should be reported um, the people that that ha harm me, they're old, they're sick, uh, cancer, whatever else, and I just, I am, 
I'm too soft of a person. I just can't imagine doing that and sending somebody to prison and even though that's where they belong. I mean, if I knew that they were doing it to somebody else, by God, yeah, I would. But I, I'm pretty sure they're not because they're, they're unable to. Um, physical, um, blocked out the sexual. I went over that. The longer I have the memory back, the more I see and know what was done to me. And it, and it, it really fills in the holes and gaps that I've had in my life, trying to figure out why I, why I was treated, um, uh, the way I was by certain people. And I believe it was their guilt and their shame. And the only way that they could deal with it is by kind of taking it out on me, even though I was the victim and whatever else. Um, I personally can't speak to exactly why, because I'm not them, but that's what I tell myself. And if that's the way I want to look at it, I guess that's the way I want to look at it. It started when I was just a baby. Um, my, I, it was showing that they would carry me. They would actually trade me. I don't know if it was for drugs or, or what it was for, or if it was just because they were involved in a certain, you know, group of people that that's what what they like to do I don't know but um I grew up you know as I was growing up my menstrual cycles were extremely painful they were extremely heavy um when I was 18 I was told I would never be able to have children I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis which is a bladder disease and endometriosis and I had many a surgeries and I was, God blessed me, thank God, with one do one, one daughter and I had her, but right after I had her, I had to have a full hysterectomy because I was just such a mess inside. This is, I researched this and yes, it more than likely if you have these problems, I'm not saying everybody it has been sexually abused, but most people have been because when you're a child and people are doing that to you, you have not developed, you, nothing should be happening down there like it is so so it really um, has affected my life I have a machine that runs my bladder for me um, and like I said I could only have one child I was blessed with one I'm not complaining I'm very grateful for the one I have and but they took that away almost away from me but they did take it away from me because I was unable to have any more children um, and they I've had medical problems my whole life because of it and and it's just the emotional, the just, it's, it's a lot. <clears throat> um, what makes people finally remember? I told you about that. And I went over my stuff. Um, let me see what else I want to go over. I started with my, oh, I don't want to go into all that. I was going to go into really explaining exactly what happened. And I don't think that that's necessary. Um, I think maybe that was more me just needing to write it down. I journal like crazy, so that's why I'm always looking at notes and because I have ideas popping in my head left and right. And so, um, what else here? What kind of treatment do they recommend for this? They, what I when I researched it and what I've been told and what I've I've gone through. You know, I haven't finished therapy, but I've been in therapy for quite a while. So, um, they suggest a trauma focused. Therapy is the the best that, you know, that's the the one that is, you know, obviously veered towards trauma. And that's the one that you should really seek out because they have good um, ways to cope with it, good ways to to help you heal from it. And and also, you know, I, I turn to God. I turn to the universe and ask them quite often to help me heal and or to help me to see what I need to do. And then to also to help me have forgiveness in my heart because forgiveness is definitely one that thing that will help you throughout this because once you are able to forgive, I'm not saying you ever have to forget or you have to like that person, but it's it makes it a lot easier when you can forgive because then you're able to get that burden off your back and you're able to start to heal and move on. Um, let me see. Let me see what else I want to go. Um, the trauma-focused therapy is not to make people remember all the disgusting details and everything that happened. People do not need to remember everything. 
rather than rather the goal of the psycho you know that like the therapy is to help people gain authority over their trauma and related memories and feelings so they can get on with their lives and in a healthier way in a um not like i said not carrying that burden of not knowing or not remembering or remembering and caring you know what i mean and not actually doing something to actually heal from it a lot of people don't think that they need therapy they think they can deal with it on their own this is what a lot of people you know that have had such traumatic things happen we have addictions we have insecurities you know we feel worthless we feel like we're you know i mean you feel certain things and it affects your you know your romantic relationships your your friendship relationships it affects the way that we look at people and trust people and you know if we're going to have our guards completely up or down or and it you know it affects people sexually too a lot of people that have been sexually abused a lot of them are like promiscuous or the complete opposite to where they some people are shy and they they don't it just really triggers people in a negative way it's not a healthy way but if you do have therapy and you do work through it then your relationships will can you know be able to to be healthier your sex life will be able to be healthier and you know you won't be going overboard with sex because you think that that's the way that you receive love or you know or how whatever it is that you you know you feel mine was um when i was younger i mistaked love for sex so i'm not saying i slept with the whole you know goddamn town or anything but i was more sexually active than i am now i'm single and now i don't i just can't and it's not i don't think it has anything to do with my trauma it's just the way that i look at love and i love myself so much more i mean I have a lot more self-love and self-worth and, you know, I just really view things a lot differently. And plus I'm getting older, so that, you know, I mean, for me, it's made a difference. Um, let me see what else. At the same time, uh, to prevent the past from continuing, continuing to influence the present negativity negatively god i can't speak i'm sorry this retrograde has just really been hard on me it is vital to focus on the present since the goal of the treatment when you're doing the therapy is to help individuals live you know through it um heal from it and have functional lives that aren't toxic and you know, self-harm, you know, what we do to ourselves. Um, you know, a lot of us have addictions to drugs and alcohol and sex. And so that's, those reasons right there should give you the reason to go to therapy because it's hard to, to have such a traumatic thing. And then we're trying to mask everything by, you know, filling our bodies full of toxic things. And then that creates more problems and which we all know. Um, a list of a, effects uh childhood trauma has on us as adults we have anxiety depression suicide is big self-esteem problems um, post-traumatic stress dis disorder which i have very much so um and that's another reason why i go to therapy is because i i do have it so bad and it doesn't just stem from that it stems from a couple other things um, drug and alcohol abuse, relationship difficulties, um, low self-esteem, self-worth, scared of sexual intimacy, not able to open up with people regarding emotions, trust. Um, we feel ashamed. We, we, some people will continue to, to do that to their own children. It will be something that they learn and it will be this unhealthy habit to where they'll sexually abuse their children and and so on and so on or you know somebody else's children um it's something that we have to work on and it's step by step day by day it's you know like any trauma it's something that you have to focus on and work hard on and unfortunately it is a lot of work but 
and it's not fair. None of it's fair. We didn't ask for it, but if we want to be healthy adults, you know, that are able to function without having a drug or alcohol problem or a sex, you know, addiction, it is something that's definitely worth doing and and putting the work in, you know, for. So if you or someone you know is being physically, emotionally, or sexually abused, please report it. If you don't be afraid, don't think that you're going to get in trouble because once you report it, whomever's telling you that is the one that's going to get in trouble. They're the ones that are going to have to answer to what they've been doing. Um, because like I said, in my, and I'm not saying that I'm right in my case whatsoever, because it shouldn't matter how old the people are or, or whatever else. Um, more than likely, likely if they're doing it to you, they're doing it to someone else and they might, you know, really harm, you know, really hurt somebody. Or, it's just really important that we're, we're not afraid to, to report it or talk about it because there is help for every one of us as a child all the way up until, you know, adulthood. I'm 43 years old and this just came about a year ago. I, yeah, a year ago is when I started remembering. So there are hotlines. There are, you know, you report it to your local police department. You know, you report it to your teachers at school. You can go to therapy or counseling and report it to them and they'll report it for you because they're legally bound to do that. Um, you can definitely contact me on here or on my, or you can email me and I will do anything I can to help you. Um, if you are, feel like your life's in danger, please, you know, call 911 and report it. If you feel like you can't report it to anyone, report it to me and I will definitely help you. Obviously, I think that we need to speak out more about, you know, these, this type of abuse. We need not to be ashamed of anything because we didn't do anything wrong and we need to start trying to figure out better ways to handle and p punish and rehabilitate these type of people. So then they, they're not coming back out in society and, you know, still doing it, you know, just making a, like a, a an ongoing cycle of it throughout their whole life because that's typically what happens. People say, well, they should be castrated and well, maybe to some extent, maybe some people should. I don't know. That's not for me to decide, but I don't think that throwing people in prison, and this is a huge thing for me, is it's not doing anything for them because they go sit in a cell. What do you think they think about the entire time they're in there? I mean, are they, they say, well, they go through these programs. Well, you know, come on in our prison systems and jails, those systems are not I mean, they're not effective. The people do what they have to do to get the hell out of there. That's all it comes down to. Instead of throwing people in prison and lock them behind bars, you know, let's let's um, develop these like centers or these places they can go, and that's what it's veered towards. It creates jobs for people. Um, I know the prison systems do also. I'm not saying we shouldn't have prison, but I think in certain circumstances that it needs to. We need to figure out ways to change all these bad habits, all these things that are happening in our world. And we need to have more understanding. And that's really hard to say when it comes to something like this. Um, we need to have more compassion, um, patience, you know, love. We always need more love in the world. We need forgiveness. Uh, I know that's easy to say. I'm not saying that the people that did this to me, that I'm just like 100%, oh, I have patience with you and I understand what why you did it because I don't. And um, I'll, I'll probably never know because instead of them admitting it, they make it to be where like I'm crazy and I just made this all up and, you know, and that's a lot of it too. If somebody does do that to you, if you know and if you, you, you know that you're not having any, you know, you know, psychological problems and illusions and stuff like that, then please don't allow these people to do that because of course they're not going to admit to it. They're not going to do anything to, to get themselves in trouble. They don't want people to look at them like they're monsters. Um, so why would they not make you look bad? Well, that's what they do. At least that's what they do in my case. And 
you know, I've learned to deal with it and I'm to the point where I don't give a shit what people think about me. I know what's right. I know what happened and I know, you know, I've been working through it and, but I just had to throw that out there about the prison because I don't, we're not solving anything in this country by doing that. We're not making people better and, you know, teaching them or, you know, reprogramming their brains to, to know any better than what they just, you know, what they're in there for. So, um, I do believe everybody deserves a set, you know, a second chance. I do believe people make mistakes. I do believe people can change and heal. Um, I do believe in that. And I think that, that, you know, I mean, some people are going to be like, Oh my God, is this chick work for real? I mean, what the hell is she talking about? You know, they're sick people and you know, fuck them. And you know, and she's stupid and I'm just saying how I feel. I mean, and that is how I feel. Um, I can't go through my whole life being angry and, and, you know, pissed off at everybody that has ever harmed me in my life because that's like almost everybody. So you got to, you kind of have to learn to adjust and kind of make some adjustments to what some, you know, circumstances. And like I said, if it would have been like, I don't know, 20 years ago, it would have been a different story. But I also, I don't, I don't want to really go through everything that's, that has to be done, uh, to have these people, you know, punished for it. For one thing, I have to prove it. And, you know, it was a long time ago. I don't think it would be very hard to prove. Definitely not. Um, but, you know, that's just just how I feel as of now. I mean, I could change my mind tomorrow. Who knows? Um, I hope that you got some good information out of this. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I mean, it's kind of a sensitive subject. I come on here and share my experiences because I believe that that's why I was put in the, in the circumstances that I was and what lessons I needed to learn from them. And and I want to speak out and let people know not to be ashamed of ever of anything that happens to you. No matter if people believe you or not, I'm not here to make anybody believe me. I know the truth, like I said, and that's just how it is. I don't really care if anybody believes me. I just want to speak out. I just want people to know that they're not alone, that there are people out there that, you know, this happens to all the time. Um, never be ashamed. And if you need any help or advice or anything, please contact me. Or if you just need a friend to talk to, please contact me. I am more than willing to take time out of my day or night or whatever to talk to anyone, um, to give you advice, to, to, you know, just to even a shoulder to cry on. So, well, anyways, I'm sending much peace, love, happiness, positive vibes. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful Monday. I hope your whole week is wonderful. I hope the weather warms up. I'm so, I about freaked when I realized it was March 1st today. And I was like, score! Because I'm so sick of winter. It's gradually, you know, spring's gradually getting here. But into here in Wyoming, we have quite a few months left of winter. Well, anyways, I'll quit talking. Peace. Many kisses and hugs. Have a great day.